Okay, good morning. For the second time, I am Simon. I am not Irene. I do not speak Spanish. Uh, yes, he does. Uh, we've had this conversation. It's a passive, uh, passive comprehensive skill. Um, I, yes, so uh, this is probably the most you will be uh, hearing in English in, in this class, and there's a perfectly good reason for it. Uh, today we'll be talking uh, about fundamentals of video editing. Uh, I don't know how accurate this title is. I struggle with titles notoriously. Uh, they're usually very awkward. Uh, but so this is what we're going to be doing today. Uh, as I mentioned, this session is formally now. It is being recorded. Uh, if you do not want to, uh, or if you have objections uh, to being recorded, uh, let me or your instructor know. Um, and or stay out of the range of the, of the camera. Um, I do not know how range, how wide the range is, so just you know, be uh, use your judgment. Um, uh, what else? Uh, you all should have brought your computers. I see you all have your computers. If you do not have a computer and have like a tablet instead, uh, things should work too. It's just going to be a little bit different. Um, and uh, I think we can start. Uh, yeah, the, the slide deck will be shared with you. I already passed it on to your instructor. And uh, the uh, concert recording that we're shooting today is uh, will be posted online for everybody who could not have come to uh, any of the sessions offered this week. Um, and also, you know, just for future sake. So uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it. Uh, today we will be talking about fundamentals of video editing and we will do that by ways of Adobe Creative Cloud Express. It used to be called Adobe Spark. I don't know what happened there. Bad marketing in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, so, what I would like you to do now as I am talking and talking, uh, I would like you to go to adobe.com forward slash express and uh, set up an account there. Uh, there are no tricks, this is uh, a fully fledged, uh, well developed Adobe product. Um, I don't know what kind of information they're collecting. Um, it is free, so they're probably collecting something. Um, and then as you are setting up your account, um, feel free to use any email that, uh, that you want. If you kind of want to keep Columbia things uh, together, you can use your school email. Um, there, it will give you an option to sign up for like a class account. Do not do that. Um, there is no class account for, um, for, for this, uh, the way I have, set, have it set up. Um, okay, so as you guys are making yourselves acquainted with uh, Adobe Creative Cloud Express, uh, I'm going to say a few words about it. So, um, if you've ever worked with Adobe things uh, before by show of hands... Okay, yeah, this is nothing like it. Uh, this is designed for non-designers, okay? So, uh, no learning curve. Uh, it just works. Uh, it is heavily template-based. The templates are really pretty. Uh, but because it is so simple and because it's so uh, structured, uh, there are very few things that you can configure. Um, and you know, you will be having questions, we'll be hopefully getting into these questions, but um, you know, there, there's always a trade-off like that. Um, it is really easy to learn and use. Uh, if you've used Adobe Creative Suite before, this is nothing like it. Um, if you've used, uh, I don't know, uh, iMovie, it, that is more like it. Uh, it will be compatible across all systems, so if you have a device that has a screen that's connected to the internet, it will work on it. Um, on computers, it runs out of the browser, across all browsers. Uh, on tablets, you'll have to download an app for it. The interface is the same at the end of the day. Um, pretty powerful because it runs in the cloud. There are two gigs of free storage that it comes with, or you know, if that's too not enough for you, which it may be. Um, you can also purchase up to 100 gigabytes um, for a subscription fee. So um, they do uh, offer you that, that tier. Um, okay, so that's about what we will be working with uh, today. A few words about me, myself, and uh, the Language Resource Center, which your instructor has already mentioned, so for the third time. My name is Simon. I am uh, the educational technologist at this department right there. Uh, before coming to Columbia, I used to be a language instructor uh, in Chicago, where I taught uh, German, Polish, and English as a second language. So I do have experience uh, working with students. But I'm more into uh, technology myself. I'm currently working on a PhD in computational linguistics. 
uh, and specifically looking in various uh, natural and processing technologies and how they can be used in education. But um, that's why I do my free time, and I commute a lot in my free time, and uh, when I'm not involved in free time activities, I work here. Uh, this is our URL, lrccolumbia.edu. And you guys are completely fine not knowing that we even exist because we are hidden very deep underground in the Bellows uh, School of uh, Foreign Affairs, um, which we will take a look at how to, how to reach in a second. Uh, we are a hub for language instruction at Columbia. There are over 50 foreign languages offered here. Uh, many of those are less commonly taught languages, such as uh, Wallace, Swahili, Romanian, Finnish. Uh, those are more or less uh, the languages that are, we primarily work with. And by working with, uh, I mean we help with instructional uh, design, uh, materials development, uh, curricular consultation, things like that. We have a bunch of resources for all these languages that we design, promote, and manage. Uh, and yeah, we also work with uh, more commonly taught languages like Spanish, German, uh, Italian, Russian. So we do it all. Um, yeah, I think that is pretty pretty good for uh, for introduction. Uh, so. Has anyone been to the Language Resource Center? No. Okay. Has anyone have any does anyone have any inclination that I could possibly be located physically on campus? Is it in the the international building? Yeah. Brian Watson? Yes. Right. I yeah. Sir, I you're, you're paying attention. I just mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I was just gonna say hi, because. See the door. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Okay. So yeah. So we have a. Uh, so we also have host various events and conferences um, at our center, uh, which uh, are meant usually for uh, language language faculty and language instructors. Um, and oftentimes uh, we run into situations where people get lost. They don't know how to find us. Um, and for those people, we have a video, uh, which I will play for you. Probably the most exciting part of the video. Obviously, logically, there are two floors beneath us still. I know it's crazy. Yeah, it's uh, it's 
you know, if you've never been, uh, you know, go in there and explore and get lost. I want to see if I could stay there for like five days and if anybody could find me. Nobody will find you. Nobody will find you. Nobody will leave. I just got a new apartment, these guys. <laughs> You're probably going to find yourself lost in the like restricted sections and catalogs that are like from the 1950s. One that's like the guy in the terminal. <laughs> Not even that. There's just there's just vastness of empty space. Right. And there's no yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's 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 quite something. Okay, uh, so did you guys like the video? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did you make it with the Adobe? I didn't make it. That was before my time. Um, okay. Well, I, I do think uh, we can do better than that, uh, and that is what we will try to do together, collectively, uh, in the first part, or I should say, second part um, of this workshop. So we will start to um, assemble a video like that. Um, and in order for us to do that, we'll need a couple of resources. Um, so the first bullet point you've already, we've already addressed, right? Um, if you haven't done so yet, um, it is absolutely crucial for you to, uh, in order for you to be able to follow, to go to adobe.com forward slash express. Um, the second bullet point, uh, is a or links you to a uh, repository of various photos, pictures, and video clips um, that I have taken uh, that basically take you through uh, or take you down into the Language Resource Center uh, from the 118th Street. Uh, the URL is bit uh, period ly forward slash adobe underscore workshop. Uh, so if you don't mind, you know, take a minute to see if you can reach that repository. It's just a Google Drive folder. Cool. Uh, there are a few other things I wanted to draw your attention to, um, and this is applicable. This is relevant for what we'll be doing today, but also moving forward. Uh, I am under the assumption that you will be making other projects for other classes, whether you know, languages or not, um, for which you may use uh, Domain or sorry, open domain images and um, audio files. So uh, you may already be familiar with these resources, uh, and if you are, great. Uh, for those of you who aren't, uh, I just listed two that I use most commonly. Uh, one of them is Unsplash, um, and this is a repository of high definition images that you can use to your heart's content. Uh, no, no copyrights on any of them. Uh, the other one that's pretty similar is called Pexels, so it's like Pixels with an E. Um, pretty, uh, pretty similar concept. Uh, Pexels is actually also integrated with um, Adobe Express, um, which I will show you how to get to, but you know, outside of Adobe, if you want to use it, um, that's how you get to it. Um, and this is for images, now there's also something similar for audio files. Uh, we have two repositories, there's a lot more too. Uh, freesound.org is an online database of uh, sound effects like background, uh, tunes, theme, themes, uh, things like that. And it's fully you know, searchable uh, using human language terms. Uh, and same with uh, Sound Bible. So this is just you know to sort of put on your on your radar here. Um, again, you will have access to the slide deck with all those links. So uh, you know if you're not taking notes, that is completely okay. Um, cool. Any questions at this point? Usually me asking the question in the case of those questions. So uh, with that introduction, uh, let's get to work. And uh, we shall commence by going to Adobe Express, uh, which I would all, which I would like you all to do right now. Um, and you should see something that looks similar to this. Yeah. So let us open up for a new project, which we can do uh, with this plus sign in the upper left corner. So if we hit it. You'll see there's a bunch of things that we can that are uh, a bunch of things that are available to us. 
Uh, we are chiefly interested today with making a video, uh, but there are other things that we can also produce, such as you know, Instagram posts, flyers, collages, cards, even web pages. I think it also lets you like make resumes. Um, you know, they have literally templates for everything. Um, so it's very, very useful. But like I said, we will be focusing on making a video today. And let's just name it. Something. Uh, well, I chose this title. It's irrelevant. You can, you know, name it whatever you want. This can always be uh, updated. Can always be changed. And uh, yeah, and feel free, you know, to to follow along, uh, either individually or with your partners, however you want. I'll hit next. Uh, you're welcome to pick a story template. Um, this is not something that we will be doing today, but you know, you're certainly uh, allowed to, to explore it later in your own time. Uh, these are pretty cool. Um, I am not um, as excited about them because they're very, I found them very constricting. So what I will do is I'll just start a new one from scratch. And here we are. This is the video creator. Um, does everyone see something, something like this? This kind of interface. Great. Um, okay. So by default, you will notice that um, the screen is uh, in Columbia baby blue. Um, this is totally accidental. It can be changed from the theme tab right here. Uh, you will notice the default theme is called title. Um, and it sort of, you know, when you mouse over it, it sort of gives you a sense of the font phases that it uses, the transitions that it applies. You can change the color if you want, or the dominant color, I should say, since, uh, you know, we are, we are a Columbia, we'll the baby blue. Um, but there are also other templates, you know, that you can, that you can employ, and, um, Adobe Express gives you a couple of them. Uh, one thing to uh, remember is that once you select a template, you're kind of stuck with it, meaning that like, you can't really change the font face. Uh, you can adjust the size of the text if you want, um, but that's about it. You can't change the dominant color, you know, so like once you're set, you're set. Um, but like I, yeah, like I mentioned, oh, hey, Adobe, you want me to? Uh, no, thanks. I'm not. Okay, so let's say that um, I'm happy with this title theme, and I'm happy with the color, and you know I would like to create my first scene indicated right here, scene number one. So let me go over to layout, and I don't know, choose something that would be appropriate for the opening take, and I will use the I will use the split screen for that. And um, since this is a clip about getting or finding uh, the Language Resource Center, you know, let's title it appropriately. So I'm going to add some text here. How to get to the Language Resource Center. Pretty good. We can manipulate the size of the text if we want to be really big. I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out here. And uh, on the right hand side, I'm going to add a video. I'm oh, sorry, another video photo. Which opens up a side panel. Now, um, there are two things that you can do here. You can either Search Adobe Stock, which pulls images from Pexels, which is one of the platforms that I, one of the repositories that I already showed you, or you know, throw in your own pictures. So I'm going to do the letter, and for that, what I will do is go to um, the resources that I already shared with you. So that's all the stuff that's in the um, in the Google Drive. Wait, I'm sorry. 
Okay, very good. Uh, I'm not good. I lost you, but good. You have some questions. Um, so, can I just go back oh, here? Okay. Yeah. So I'm adding an element here, uh -huh. and the element I'm adding is the photo, uh -huh. and that opens a panel right here, uh, which lets me to lets me either look for a photo in the system or throw in my own. So I'm going to upload my own photo here. Okay. And the photo that I'm uploading is coming from... So the photo that I'm uploading should be coming from this repository right here, but you don't have to, um, you know, get things from the shared Google Drive. You can, you know, input your own, and you see that it's like right there. LRC logo. Um, yeah, but you can use your use your own stuff here. Um, okay, so the picture is now in. Um, it's a little bit too big. I'm going to resize it. This looks pretty good. And, uh, okay, this looks pretty good to me. Uh, what we can still do is, you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner there is a little counter here. Um, this indicates the duration of that particular scene that we're working on. So right now, it lasts four seconds. That's more or less like the default. Um, that will change depending on the content um, that you decide to put into the scene. And what I mean by that, for instance, is if you have a video clip that lasts 10 seconds and you put a video clip, that longer video clip, in the scene, this will automatically adjust to the length of the video clip. Um, but you know, for now, I'm just going to leave it at 4 seconds. And one more thing that I will do is I will add some narration to it. And we do that with this microphone icon right here, which should be pretty useful for your Spanish project. How to get to the Language Resource Center. Great. And you see what happened was that since I was talking for five seconds, this automatically adjusted to the five seconds of, which is the length of the, of the commentary there. Okay. Pretty happy with it. So, well, let's maybe create another scene explaining where the center is located. I'm going to use the same split screen layout. And maybe this time I will put the writing on the right hand side. And I will say that the LRC is located at the uh, intersection of 118th Street and, and Amsterdam Avenue. I do happen to have a picture of that intersection, which I will insert on the left. Amsterdam Avenue. Okay, so far so good. So, so far we've been working with uh, static images, text, uh, but this is a video project, right? So let's see um, how we can incorporate actual pieces of video um, into this. So I'm going to go ahead and create and add another scene to it. And since I am inserting a uh, longer piece of video, I'm going to choose a different layout. I'm going to use the caption layout right here. And I'm going to add a video from my repository, which shows the building entrance. Okay. So a couple things are happening here. Um, 
on the bottom, you see that there's a, there's a slider that highlights a section of the video that is to be included in our scene. Um, this section is currently about three seconds long. I'm going to extend it to about five seconds, like so. And I'm going to have it uh, maybe start right here. And once I'm, I've selected something that I'm happy with, I'm going to hit save. Welcome to the SIPA building. Okay. And I want this to be uh, so across the location. Okay, perfect. Okay, pretty good. Um, let's see what the whole product looks like from the beginning. To do that, go to preview. How to get to the Language Resource Center. The LRC is located at the intersection of 118th Street and Amsterdam Avenue. Welcome to the SIPA building. Not bad. Semi-professional. Downright acceptable. Um, you will notice there is music in the background. Um, I did not explicitly mention how to insert such music in there. Um, we can do it from the music tab in the upper right hand corner. So if we go there, it's quick question, when you were filming this, did you use like a camera like that or like uh, just your phone? Okay. Perfect. Yeah, good question. Uh, you can definitely use professional equipment, like the back camera over there. Uh, but you can also use your phones. Uh, quality wise you are able to obtain some more results unless you have like really super um, special is there some kind of like content blocker that we should be aware of that might prevent this website from working properly? Is Good you, question. My computer, is my, my, the website is already looking very strange to me. I don't know. Um, um, okay, let me take a look at your website uh, after we are, yeah. in, in a few minutes, uh, once we move to, to the next section. Um, no, there are no, you don't need to be using any content blockers here because there are no pop ups. Uh, you know, this is all self-contained. It is what you see. You will need to, which I think is pretty standard by now, uh, depending on the browser you're using, you're going to have to, you know, give it some permissions for, like, you know, like microphone access, uh, if you want to do narration and things like that. But, you know, nothing, uh, nothing beyond that. Um, good question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let's maybe go back to the music. And... Um, the tunes that are available to us are all listed here. If we don't like the tunes, we can always edit our own music, which we can you know, compose, record ourselves, or pull it from you know, one of these sites. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that once you select a, um, a sound file, um, it is something that's going to be playing in the loop throughout the entire clip. Um, because of how simple this tool is, it doesn't give you the ability to insert like, you know, individual sound effects. Like uh, yesterday, we had students who were trying to insert explosions uh, into their clip. It, oh, I went flying. Really? That's awesome. exciting. Okay, hold on, let's see. Uh, okay, it works. Uh, yeah, so uh, it wouldn't. They, they couldn't do that, right? Um, so something to keep in mind. Once you settle on a uh, you know soundtrack file, this is something you're going to be listening to throughout the entire clip, uh, which you know should hopefully be no longer than one minute. 
so right now we have uh, this tune set as our background. Sounds like church music. Uh, let's maybe do something different. Um, I don't know. Thoughtful looks good. And these are categories, of course. Uh, Stroll in Central Park, not really a Western Sage. I'm liking it. Okay, so we'll stick with that and maybe lower the volume. what it sounds like when you're good. How to get to... Okay, and we get, we get the church music in the background still. So. Okay, let's do it again. Maybe just click add new music? Or... Uh, so, good point. Um, I don't know where it came from. Add my music, that would allow you to upload your own track. Oh. Hmm. Um, okay. How to get to the Language Resource Center? The LRC is located at the intersection of one. Okay, perfect. I'm very happy with it. I also don't like listening to myself. Uh, okay, so let's say that we're happy with our clip. Uh, this is what we wanted. We're good on the project. The narration checks out. We like the videos. We like the pictures. We're ready. We're ready to uh, share it with the instructor. Um, so, um, your instructor wants to you to share it as a file and via email. Um, that could be done by downloading the video, uh, with, for which there's a designated button. All we have to do is click on it and uh, wait for the video to render. Now, as Adobe is thinking and working on things. Uh, it is imperative that you leave uh, the window open and up front. Like, don't switch, don't do anything, just like, wait for it to, to process or else uh, weird things can happen. Okay. So, you know, it will take a second, um, depending on how long the clip is, it may take a little bit longer. So it downloads to your designated downloads folder from where you can open it, uh, see what it looks like as an independent file. How to get to the Language Resource Center? The LRC is... Yeah, so you will see the transitions are a little bit smoother, uh, the scroll, the panning is a little bit smoother, the scrolling and so on and so forth. Uh, which is the way we, we want it, and this is how your instructor will also receive it. Um, cool, let me go back here and exit this wizard. Um, some of the things I should, may still mention, so you can, um, I'm not sure if it is within the parameters of this specific project, but you know, if you ever are in a position where you want to build something together with a partner or with a group, you can add uh, other users to uh, to your creation, to your project. Uh, you can also share uh, your project from like directly from Adobe. Um, I don't know publish any details. I haven't looked into it. Uh, you can put it on your Google Drive and you know use it or. Uh, Pointy link to it, um, and I think it pretty much covers it. Like I mentioned, it's pretty simple. Uh, it, this is how it works from the browser. It will be exactly the same on the tablet. Uh, you just need to have an app for it. Um, it is pretty much free, uh, pretty powerful, and um, I think ultimately it should make your life a lot easier uh, at the end of the semester. Um, I do have the final version of the clip uh, that we are now sharing with uh, our guests, potential guests. Do you want to see it? Okay. I put it together. My narration is in the background. I hate it. Uh, I'm play for you anyway. How to get to the Language Resource Center. The LRC is located at the lower level of the School of International Public Affairs building. 
the scheme of your thing in your setting of Amsterdam Avenue that you want to have the street. This is the entrance on the 118 street. When you enter the building, walk down the hallway and walk the stairs ahead of you. At the stairs, make a left. Walk ahead until you reach a sign on your left. This is what the sign looks like. Walk down the hallway. It looks like we're moving in the right direction. Keep walking until you reach the stairwell on your left. Let's take the stairs down. Once downstairs, make a right at this sign and walk through this door. We are almost there. Final stretch. Welcome to the Language Resource Center. Great. So, uh, this concludes the second part of this workshop. And for the final part of this workshop, uh, we would like to pass it on to you. Uh, so, Emily brought up a question which I think is really interesting. The original, uh, well, disappointing video uh, had areas where things were sped up a bit. Um, how do you replicate that in Adobe Express? You do not. Uh, because of how simple Adobe Express is, it just doesn't offer the function. What you would need to do is um, you can try recording the video in the speed up mode with your phone. Um, and then put it on your computer and import it that way. Oh, did you record it landscape or... So I did both, depending on what I was shooting. So like if I was, you know, in the, in the hallway, then I kept it uh, vertically. Uh, if I was outside, you know, like in front of the building, I would do horizontal. But, you know, this is really up to you. Mm -hmm. If you uh, integrate, or like, um, allow access to Google Photos. Mm -hmm. It like then Adobe has like all of my photos, right? And no, it doesn't. It has um, all that they will have is pointers. It will have like, links to your uh, to your photos. Okay. So if I like allow access. I'm not just like giving them my entire. Life. No, because still, like the access itself still requires your agency. <laughs>